What's up guys, this is Voxside and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at creating a nice uh, burning effect and this will also be using uh, trap code particular to generate these nice particles. So if you want to follow along you will need the uh, trap code particular installed. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a new composition and I'll just name this main comp. So this is full HD and for duration I'm going to be using 200 frames. Hit OK. Let's start by creating a new background layer. So that's Control Y and this will be just a new uh, white solid which I will rename to background. Let's go ahead and add a generate ramp and let's adjust these uh, ramp points a bit. Give it this uh, nice diagonal uh, gradient and for my colors maybe let's go with a maybe like a desaturated blue and uh, the other one I will leave as black. And I will go ahead and add a new effect to this and add a noise and grain fractional noise. Let's set the blending mode to soft light. I will decrease the contrast maybe 5. Or let's try a value of uh, 15 for now. And uh, I can see we're sort of getting some weird artifacts and you can uh, really easily get rid of uh, this screen uh, bleeding effect if you go inside your project file and uh, click where it says 8 BPC. And you can just change this uh, depth to be 16 bits per channel. And this will just move out our uh, colors. All right, and let's go back in our effects controls and uh, let's maybe decrease this value of contrast to maybe 10. For complexity, I will use maybe two. Let's increase the scale. All right, and I'll even go ahead and add a fast blur effect. Turn on repeat edge pixels and just increase the blurriness. So this uh, layer of fractional noise will just break up our pattern a bit, just so it's not a plain gradient in the background. We can go ahead now and add a text layer. So I'll grab my text tool and let's type our text. And let's reposition this. So if I select my selection tool, so that's V. And I'll just drag this text around towards the center and if I hold Control and Shift, this will uh, snap my text right in the center and it should be alright for now. And I also want to pre-compose this. So if you pre-compose this layer, then you can go ahead and uh, if you change the text, everything else will update. And this way we're sort of creating a procedural effect. So let's name this to text holder. And I want to go ahead and duplicate this layer now. So Control D. Grab my first layer, press S for scale, and I'll just scale this up. And I'll go to effect and add a fast blur to this. And maybe give it a slight blur. And let's change this layer's blending mode to screen. And uh, if I press T for opacity, I can lower the opacity now. And just maybe create a bit more detail in the background. So let's use an opacity of maybe 7%. Now I will go ahead and create a new solid layer. So Control Y, hit OK. And I will go to Effect, Transition, Linear Wipe. And I want to animate the transition completion for this guy from 100%. So I will set a keyframe for 100% at frame 0. Move over to maybe frame 150. And set another keyframe for 0% transition completion. And this will be the resulting animation now. And now I can simply go ahead and change the wipe angle to match with our animation. So something like this should work and I will just increase the feather a bit, maybe 50%. And now this will be our driving layer for our transition. And I'll go at frame zero maybe and just uh, decrease the transition completion a bit. Just until it's sort of right outside of our text area. And I will go ahead and now pre-compose this layer. So Control Shift C and I'll name this transition layer. Let's go ahead and create a new solid. And for the solid, I will add a fractional noise. And I'll just leave this fractional noise as it is and go ahead and pre-compose this. And I will rename this to fractal noise pre-comp. And uh, now I will hide this layer, go to my transition layer, go to effect, distort and let's choose displacement map 
And for my transition layer inside the displacement map, I will use the fractional noise precomp that we've just created. And if I increase my max vertical and horizontal displacement, or maybe even just set the horizontal displacement to zero and just increase the vertical displacement. Now you can kind of see the effect we're getting. And this will be a nice base that will drive uh, all of our animation. And uh, let's go ahead and add a distort turbulent displace. And if I set the turbulent displace above my displacement map, and uh, let's maybe increase the amount a bit and uh, let's decrease the size. You can kind of see we're adding a little bit more uh, detail to our uh, transition uh, layer. All right, so this is without the displacement, the turbulent display, sorry. And uh, now this is uh, the result with it. And this will just add a extra step of uh, detail. And now I can go ahead and grab both of these layers and pre-compose this. And I will rename this to, let's say, transition main. I will go ahead and grab my second text holder layer and duplicate this. And let's rename this layer to maybe holder reveal. And the layer below it, let's rename this to text holder black. And uh, I will go ahead and set the text holder reveal layer to be luma matte for transition main. So this is now going to look at this transition layer and uh, reveal itself based on the alpha information for the transition layer. And for my text holder black layer, if I go ahead and go to generate, fill, and uh, let's set the fill color to be a almost a 100% black. Now you can see we're getting this uh, nice effect. All right, so uh, starting to shape up our animation. And uh, let's uh, go to the next step here and I will duplicate this transition main layer. So control D and unhide this. And I will go ahead and pre-compose this layer, so Control shift c and I will rename this to Transition Highlight. And uh, let's step inside this layer now. And I want to sort of filter out only the edge part of this uh, transition layer. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate this layer and I will go ahead and for the second duplicate I will add Channel Invert. And you can see we're already sort of uh, getting the effect that we want. And you can also offset this layer in, th in the timeline to create a higher threshold for the edges. And maybe something like this should be fine. And I'm also going to go ahead and add the adjustment layer. And for this adjustment layer, I can go to color correction curves and maybe increase the brightness a bit and increase the contrast. And I can also go to my alpha channel and... Uh, just increase the contrast even more. And now let's step back inside our main comp. I will grab my text holder black layer, control D, and I will place this on top of our transition highlight, switch the fill color to a 100% white. And for my transition highlight, I will set this to be luma matte. All right, and you can see the effect we're getting now. We're just sort of filtering out this edge uh, region, which we can then use to recolor. And this layer will also be used to drive our particles as well. So I will grab both of these layers and the control shift C to pre-compose. Let's rename this just to highlight. And I'll go ahead and set this to add. Let's go ahead and add a noise, fractional noise effect to this layer and set the blending mode to multiply. And if I solo this layer, I can maybe decrease the brightness a bit and let's go to our transform and let's decrease the scale. So this fractional noise will just give this layer a bit more of uh, extra detail. Let's set the fractional type to maybe twist and increase the contrast, maybe decrease the brightness a bit. And uh, let's go ahead and go to effect, color correction, tritone. Let's set the midtones to a nice orange and the highlights to a yellow and go ahead and add the color correction curves. Let's increase the contrast here, maybe a bit of the brightness and I'll even add a glow to this layer. So stylize glow, let's spread out the radius, maybe decrease the threshold and maybe increase the intensity a bit, maybe spread the radius even more. And now if I unsolo this layer, 
you can see now that this is the result. And I also want to offset this highlight layer in time a bit, so I will just drag this over to start before my initial uh, text reveal, so I'm just gonna drag this to the left a bit until we get these uh, nice edges here. And this will just give it more of a uh, burning uh, feel to it. Alright, not bad, now we have to take care of our particles. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this highlight layer. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of our effects. So delete. And now I just have this uh, plain black and white layer. Before I add my particular layer, I want to go ahead and press F4 and turn this into a 3D layer. So uh, particular only works with uh, 3D layers. Let's go ahead and press Ctrl Y to add our new solid. Let's add trap code particular to this. And let's step inside our emitter, change the type to layer. And for layer emitter, I can go ahead and set this to be our uh, highlight layer. Let's change the RGB usage to size, vel, rotation. So this guy. And for uh, layer sampling, I will choose particle birth time. Let's just keep our particular layer selected. So I will just uh, unsolo the highlight layer and let's rename this to particles. And now if I increase the particles per second, you can kind of see the effect we're getting. So let's set up our particles now. Let's use a velocity of uh, maybe 50. Let's go to particle and uh, change the size to maybe 2. Increase the size random to 65% should be fine. And for color, I will use random from gradient. And in my gradient here, I'm just going to use this uh, preset. Or maybe this black and white preset should be all right. And for my first color, I will use a sort of like a nice uh, red orange. And for my second color, I'm just going to go with a bright yellow. All right, and this will just give some uh, variation to our particles color. Maybe let's increase the particles even more. So uh, while I'm dragging this value, I'm also holding shift to jump uh, to higher increments. This should be all right for now. Let's go to our physics tab. And I'm going to set the gravity to maybe, let's try a negative 100. So this will just make our particles fly upwards. And in my air settings, I want to increase the wind X. So I want these uh, particles to blow uh, a little over to the right as well. Maybe use another value of 100 for this. And also go to my turbulence field and just increase the effect position. And let's go to our rendering and give these some nice motion blur. So turn on a motion blur and uh, maybe I'm going to use a shutter angle of uh, 180. And uh, let's unsolo this layer now. And I'll go ahead and set the particles to add. And uh, maybe these are a bit too large. So I'm just going to use a smaller value here, maybe 1.2. And I'll go ahead and add a stylize glow to this whole layer and just duplicate this glow and increase the radius for the second glow maybe decrease the threshold or rather increase. Let's make a quick uh, ramp preview to see what we get. And also let's unhide this uh, second layer of highlight, which is just uh, the layer that's, uh, that I'm using to generate our particle. So we don't need to see this second layer of highlight. All right, let's make that uh, ramp preview. All right, so I think the scale for the turbulence noise is maybe a little too big and uh, let's go inside our particles and go to physics turbulence field and maybe set the scale to be something like seven and uh, maybe also decrease the effect position value and i'll even go to my velocity settings and change this maybe to 25 or maybe let's try 35 and also let's make these uh, particles maybe even uh, smaller, so 0.7 and let's just increase the particles per second. And uh, let's preview this. Alright, so that's a little better. Uh, let's also go to my size options and let's change the size over life. Let's use this uh, nice preset which will just uh, help in fading out our particles. 
and maybe increase the size to 0.9. Alright, and let's duplicate this particles layer now. And I'll rename this second uh, duplicate to particles large. And I'm going to go ahead and change the random seed for this. And let's just uh, solo this layer for a bit. So I want to decrease the particles per second for this guy. Something like this should be fine. And let's just increase the size maybe to 1.8 or 1.7. And uh, let's unsolo this. So I'm just going to use this layer to sort of add more variation to our particles. And uh, I can go ahead and duplicate this layer. And uh, for the second duplicate, I'm going to add a fast blur and just blur this out. So we're getting a nice aura for our bigger particles, as you can see. And uh, let's add some uh, ambient particles. So let's make a new layer and add the uh, trap code particular. Let's go to emitter, set this to a box type and increase the size X, Y and uh, Z. And maybe decrease the velocity to 15. Let's go to our particles and do the same thing for color. Set it for uh, random from gradient. Go to our uh, gradient and switch it uh, to this uh, nice black and uh, white gradient. And let's just uh, re-choose the original color. So a uh, orange with a nice uh, yellow. Let's rename this uh, layer to particles ambient. And let's set this to add. And let's just uh, solo this layer for a bit and see what we are doing here. Let's go to our emission extras and I will just set the pre-run to be 100%. So there are already particles at the beginning of our composition. Let's set the life to maybe 6. And uh, let's go to our size over life. And I'm going to be using uh, this preset over here. And this will just fade out our particles properly. And uh, let's go to physics and let's give this some uh, wind on the X and uh, let's try a negative value for uh, Y and maybe go to our turbulence field. And for turbulence field, I will uh, disable evolution speed. So I'm just going to set this value to zero because I don't want the noise to be moving and just uh, increase the effect uh, position and maybe decrease the scale to something like six. And maybe decrease the wind. And let's go to our size and set this to a size of uh, 2 and increase the random. And this should be fine. Let's also add a, just one layer of uh, glow to this. Let's unsolo this. And maybe I'll go to my background and just lower the brightness for uh, this initial uh, color. Maybe give it a bit more uh, saturation. And uh, let's go back to our particle ambient layer and set the particles per second to maybe 35. All right, and I will duplicate this layer and uh, let's add an underscore blur to this. And for the second layer, I will change the random seed. Let's increase its size. And let's go to effect, blur and sharpen camera lens blur and just increase the blur radius for this. And uh, check repeat edge pixels and this should be fine and let's just decrease the particles count for this guy maybe to 15 so this will just add a slight variation in our ambient particles and let's preview this so this will be our result but that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching so far don't forget to drop a like if you learned anything new Subscribe for more tutorials and stay tuned and I'm out.